What's up ladies and gentlemen? So I wanna give you a quick update on the project I've been working on. What this is, is a YouTube thumbnail generator. So one of the issues I had is I spent a lot of time in Photoshop and it was just taking a long time. I wanted to create something that had a bunch of templates that I could just quickly go in, type some text like something dope, and it would just automatically generate these thumbnails for me. And then I could go in, maybe change the fonts or something. Maybe change the text because it's a little too big. And then that quickly, I would have a really cool thumbnail. I'm pretty stoked about how this project is going so far. So this is how the front end looks. It's React.js. So all of these images are generated on the back end. And the back end is written in Golang. You can see all the requests here. And what's really cool is that, you know, we take this image, the URL for it, and because it's dynamically generated, we can specify a different resolution. Let's blow this up to 3840 by 2160. So you can see this is full blown 4K, none of that low resolution mumbo jumbo, like native 4K text. So yeah, we can generate some really nice thumbnails with this. So one of my motivations for building this platform was a website called placeholder.com, which allows you to really easily, let's say I can go here and make it 1000 maybe. Yeah, and it just really quickly generates these thumbnails and I could specify different colors and all that. And I can go in the URL and specify different parameters and all that. And so I wanted to build something like that, but a little more advanced, something that we can actually build thumbnails with. The first thing I started thinking about was the template and how does this template look? So I decided to use basically a list of operations. I thought about the idea of using layers, sort of like how Photoshop does it, when it comes to the code, I mean, everything is imperative in the code. So it kind of just made sense for the actual template to be sort of imperative itself in the sense of sequentially performing these different operations. And there's some things you can't really describe as a layer. You can see there's different type of operations like loading a file, resizing an image, adding a gradient, adding text. Now, all of these are default parameters for the template, but all of them can be overwritten by the user as well. So what's really cool here is that we can actually type something here and it's gonna overwrite the text for each template. You can see each template has their own text now, but if I type something else, then voila, all of them are overwritten. And the same thing, you can see all of them have different fonts, but if I go here and select a font, then all of them get overwritten with the same font. And likewise for the font size. So this kind of gives you just a nice number of variations that you can play around with. And you know, the goal is to have a lot of templates that you can just scroll through and find something of your own. So the big thing that's missing right now is custom background images. So I plan to implement the ability to upload your own custom image. And then all of these templates will be overridden by that custom image. So here in the template, you know, it's specifying a default file name, but that can be overridden by the user. So I started off with this concept of services, um, the idea that there is a thumbnail service at the highest level in charge of rendering a thumbnail. I give it a template ID and some user values that are gonna override the values in the template ID, and it gives me some bytes <laughs> or an error, and just, it's that dead simple. Now granted, <laughs> once you get deeper into it, it's not very simple. So there's this idea of operations. Now the operations actually come from the template. So the template service has this method get by ID, which is really just the file name. It's gonna grab that, parse it, and it's gonna convert that into a list of actual operations. So each operation implements this I operation interface. It has a name and it has a do method. So the app is kind of split up between these three main services, a template service, which is in charge of reading templates from files, caching them, parsing them, and then converting those into operations. The thumbnail service actually takes a list of operations and then renders the image from that. And then the font service is in charge of stuff related to fonts, like reading the list of fonts, returning that back, and so on. So far, I'm pretty stoked about this and I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out from an architectural standpoint, how it's looking visually and all that. So I have a big list of to-do items, like the ability to upload an image, which should not be stored on the server, right? That should be stored on some sort of cloud storage. So I have to set all that up. Um, performance is interesting. 
Um, caching is definitely going to be a, an important thing here. In terms of performance, you know, a lot of these test images I have are 4K images. And so it has to take that, it has to downscale it, do a bunch of stuff to it. But just parsing that 4K image in the first place is kind of memory intensive and CPU intensive. So I'm hoping that I can improve the performance by separating this thumbnail service into its own process. And then that way, when I deploy to Kubernetes, I could have three, four, five, ten of these things running in parallel. And hopefully that'll give me a good boost in performance. So, yeah, this is a fun little project. I'm looking forward to deploying it pretty soon and uh, I'll keep you guys posted. So if you like the video, please like and subscribe and support a little YouTuber like myself. Thank you for watching.